Okay, I want to be straight up honest with you all. I was going to say straight up awesome. I guess I can be straight up awesome with you all, but I'm going to be straight up honest. I'm freezing. So I'm wearing this cute shirt. It's like this Ralph Lauren. I think it's kind of a cute design. I'm not really sure if this is like the right color for me, but I'm wearing this, but I'm freezing. So I'm going to wrap myself right now. Yes, it is early March in my Christmas blanket because Adon and I, that's my husband, got blankets for ourselves around the holidays and they're just so like warm and plush and snuggly. And this is just, this is what I want to be in right now. So I'm doing it. Yeah, hi, my name's Reagan if you're new here. Uh, I want to sit down and talk with you guys today about 10 best makeup. And I got a hair in my mouth. Nothing's perfect around here. Sorry, just it's life. But I want to talk with you guys about the 10 best makeup products according to me from 10 brands. So there may be a part two to this because I kind of realized in doing this like there's a lot of brands uh especially makeup brands anymore in the clean space. So I truly picked like 10 favorites but also like I just really thought about the brands and like what's their like standout product. Like what I in a way feel like has either because some of these brands now have like sold for millions and millions of dollars to like bigger conglomerates like what makes them like what was their launching product what made them really like go from like eh, to like not even like eh, just like what made them you know when they started they everyone starts somewhere and it's pretty small but what made them like catapult i think that's the right word i'm looking for but i have my iced coffee that actually and i said coffee but it looks like milk because i'm a baby when it comes to caffeine and coffee but let's just roll in i know this was kind of a jumbled f uh introduction but hey we're here we're talking about 10 best products um yeah, subscribe if you're into clean makeup and all of this. And I'm looking down at all the products lovingly because I'm just ready to start. So let's do that. All right, so I want to start actually, and I'm not doing this in any particular order. So this isn't like, this is the number one best product or something like, no, these are 10 products and then the best product from each brand. So Again, order does not really matter in what and the way I'm talking about this. I'm actually wearing this today. This is the liquid lip I'm wearing, and this is from Johnny Concert. So these are my two favorite shades. That's why I pulled them. So I have La Beige, which I'm wearing today, which is this beige shade. And then I also have their Modit Mon Cherie, which is a red shade. This is the best formulation of a liquid lip in the clean space. Truly, it dries down, super pigmented. Like I've been wearing this for an hour or more and it looks like I just put it on. Super comfortable, non-drying, feels so soft on the lips, doesn't transfer. I mean, you can't really see because this class is kind of foggy, but wasn't what I was intending. But I just really like this. I think one of the biggest things that dries down very quickly, because I have liked the Aether Beauty liquid lips, but they don't dry down fast. And I was also thinking with a few other brands, they don't dry down as fast. I do like some of the shades of Cloven Hallows Liquid Lip, and I think they're very pretty. But, and this is a big but, they are a little bit more drying to the lips. They do hold up pretty well because they're dry, but this is a lot softer of a formulation, but it still holds, stays pigmented, doesn't budge, and just truly, the downside of this, these are like the two most neutral shades they have. I wish they had like almost a pink beige type shade, and then like a couple of others in that category of more like neutrals because everything is very pigmented and deep or like just like not daily wear shades like these two are the again most neutral type shades and this actually is a little bit deeper of a look if I would say so myself and my eye makeup actually is not that deep yeah uh I still like them but again not afraid to say that I wish there were more shades of it and I think that's a positive thing like they have a direction they can grow in and I actually would like to see more neutrals from them because again I think it's the best formulation I've tried. I just think it looks nice on the lips. Dries, doesn't dry too fast though where I can't like fix it up if I need to and 
wears very comfortably and feels nice as well. Okay, and I actually pulled both of these, but I'm including these as like one category. So this is Ilia and I have both of their mascaras. I am wearing the volumizing one today, which is this one. And I also pulled their Limitless Lash Mascara. This is like my fourth or fifth tube of this. So what I like about their formulations is they've consistently had a very good formulation. Like, this was the first one they came out with, and I've been saying for the last few years, like, it's such a great, just defining, lengthening with a little bit of volume mascara. And then they came out with this volumizing one. I'm wearing this today, and it does add a ton of volume. So for a while there, now there's been so many clean mascara releases, guys. Like, I've wanted to do a whole compilation video, but there's almost too many to talk about. And I thought about doing one and then like four more got released and I got some, it just, it's a thing. Like it truly is a thing that I need to just like get over it and like film one, but I have so many. But before that time there wasn't anything and now there are just so many more. And Ilia has always just remained a tried and true one. I think this is one of their best products. And I do like the new volumizing one. It's just like a step up, I feel, of the Limitless Lash, where this one's more defining, lengthening, little bit of volume. This one has a lot more volume to it, but it's not super clumpy as well. It just adds like a nice amount of volume without having like little balls of clump. So again, best product from Ilia, I think, and like the thing that really like catapulted them over the edge in Clean Beauty was having that really good mascara. And... <laughs> I'm gonna get someone who's like, I don't like her or whatever. But I'll say this, I did not buy any item beauty products because of Addison Rae. Maybe like I just saw, oh, Addison Rae had these, but I saw them at my Sephora and I wanted to try them. Like I was interested because it was clean beauty. And so I got the concealer and then I got a few other products and I actually like them all. The mascara is pretty good. All of it's under $20. And I'll say this, even if you don't like Addison Rae, I don't know how the business structure of this brand is, you know what I'm saying? But I'm pretty sure she doesn't own the brand. I think she's just like the face of the brand. Like I wouldn't be surprised if like she's not attached to Item Beauty in like three years. I just wouldn't. Like she might be, I don't really understand it, but it's what it is. I have nothing for or against her. I don't follow her content. She's, I was going to say she's much younger than me, but like, I don't know. I think she's like eight years younger than I am. It's just like a totally different generation and like different stuff than I'm into. So yeah, but I have loved this concealer. This is probably, I think it was in my favorites of 2021. This is their concealer in shade 100, their air hug. And it's just so damn good, guys. Like, it has the right amount of coverage. Like, it's pretty full, actually. I like the big doe foot wand. It's a satin matte finish, but it has enough of a creamy texture as well to blend out nicely without being too dry or drying. I think a lot of skin types could use this. It has a decent shade range. There's just a lot of good things going for this concealer. And I think it's like one of the best ones of the brand. Yeah. Yeah, I liked it a lot more than the Rose Ink Concealer. I'm not sure if I like it more or less than the Fit Glow Concealer, which I've loved. Um, it's a good one, you know, like, I just think they're different. They're just different products. Like this, again, is like a more Sephora-esque product where the uh, Fit Glow one is more in the clean beauty space, like green beauty space in general. But yeah, I have liked this and I wanted to talk about it because I really liked it. Okay, and then let's talk about Fit Glow because I just said them. Their lip serums. Yes, I have a lot. Okay, um, my favorite shade is Full and Halo. So they're a little bit deeper of shades. They're these two, they're pink. One has a more like brown tone to it. One has a more gray tone to it and these guys, I've been talking about them. I just dropped them all on my channel for a long time. And when they first launched, I was just like, oh my gosh, $42. I'm setting them down for a lip product, like essentially a lip gloss, but they're more than that. They are like a lip treatment. They're just so, they like make your lips feel so pillowy and moisturized and nourished and they don't bleed out. I've just had the best experience with them. And the pigmented ones, like I'm just gonna pull them right now, like Juice, Spark, and Cheer. 
Well, I just dropped one and it rolled away. But you get the picture. Like ones that are more brightly colored do kind of like stain the lips a little bit. And then I do really like their more like nudie neutral shades. They smell like vanilla. And I just have really seen a lot of really great progress from the brand in general in the last couple years. But this product, I really think like launched them into something like a, a different sphere in clean beauty where it's more of a household green brand. You know, like if anyone uses green products for the most part, like they've heard of Fit Glow Beauty and they've heard of these lip serums. And like, there's a lot from Fit Glow that I like, but I just think that their lip serums are like, they're like, like they haven't done anything with this formulation over the years or pack, like, you know, for the most part, the packaging, because it's just so good and they don't need to. Okay, so I was talking with my friend Katie about Ritual Defeat and she just started using this brand recently. I've really liked their like base cream products and actually not their base, they're more like color based products, meaning their cheek products. So this is their highlight and I have the shade Solaris and it is so beautiful. The pigment on this and like the duochrome to it and just the putty texture is beautiful. And I do like their blushes. I really do. Their base like conceal product isn't my fave. I'm not a, you know, I'm never afraid to say that. It's just not a fave for me, for my skin type. It's just not the coverage I'm looking for. And like the texture I'm looking for and the consistency. But this, gorgeous. Like it looks like it's just like, oh, it's a simple, you know, cream highlight. No, it's not. It has like these pink lavender, uh, like this illumination to it that's a little bit different, but on the skin, it doesn't look crazy. Like remember that time when people were using like green highlight and stuff? That's not what this is. It still looks very subtle, but just like with a little kick to it. So I just think it's a very unique formulation, very unique product. Their highlights, and I've had a couple through the years on here, are just fabulous. And I would highly recommend them. I think a lot of people would say their blushes are their like standout. I would say their highlights are because they're just really, really different. Where there's tons of good cream blushes out there that I could say like across the board from various brands are just really good. This is one of the most creative highlights I've seen. And I've tried tons of brands, tons of products. Okay, this looks really horrible. I actually think when a product looks bad, it means someone's used it a lot. So yeah, oh, there's someone walking their dog. It's raining outside today and they have a cute little like rain jacket. My boys don't have those because we're bad parents, I don't know. Yeah, the more love it's gotten, you know, I think the more it says about the product, like how well it works. So I have loved this from Fortini. Fortini is a very small line of indie cosmetics. And this is their Aloe Nourish Prime and Set. This is the finest powder that just sets everything so beautifully that your skin looks airbrushed. I've loved this for years at this point. Gorgeous formulation, truly the best setting powder. Like it is so thin. It almost like, it feels slick because I have a little bit on my fingers now. It's just is so slick. And it just like is so finely milled. I haven't tried anything like it in the beauty space in general. I remember someone when I was working at Ulta was like, oh, the Hourglass or so, I don't know, maybe it was Becca, I can't remember. One of those brands of uh, setting powder is just the best. And then I like went to feel the texture and it had talc in it, which I, I try not to use products with talc in them. But I was just like, this is, this doesn't even feel that good. Like in my fingers, I'm not putting that on my face. This is better. Like this is the best, like, would highly recommend. One thing about it, it's so finely milled that like when you open it and you breathe it in, you might cough a little bit. I've had some people tell me that they've had that experience. I have it almost every time I use it. It's just cause it's finely milled. It has very safe ingredients. So it's nothing that I'm particularly like scared of. Like it's only three ingredients, but yeah, it's just such a good one. Would highly, highly, highly recommend. And then next we have the Lavina bronzer. And I went back and forth because their eyeshadow palettes are very good. But I think when I really was thinking about something special about Lavina, their bronzer and their shade range, especially with their bronzer and their formulation of this product 
is amazing. So I have shade in this Sahara. I believe they have a shade lighter as well if you're even lighter than me or if you have different like a uh, skin tone because I'm more of like a pink undertone. But I believe they have between eight and 10 bronzers. And this is so buttery. The packaging is really cool. It kind of reminds me of like Alice in Wonderland. Like you can like spin, you know, I'm weird. You can spin it around and do all that stuff. And it's just gorgeous and different and unique. But the formulation of this just truly so beautifully buttery, blends out like a dream. Like this is the perfect shade for my skin tone. And they have great powder products. I would love actually to see them come out with a powder foundation because judging by how just like buttery, blendable, soft all of their powder products have been historically, that would be an awesome powder foundation. But for now, this is my favorite from them. I just think it's really unique. I think it's special. They're kind of more known, I know, for skincare, but I think their makeup is really good and particularly their bronzer chef's kiss. And Kira Weiss. I tried to kind of pick products from different like categories too. Like I didn't just want to have like a whole bunch of lipsticks or a whole bunch of blushes and you know I wanted to like mix things up. So from Kira Weiss what I think has really like put them on the map and makes them stand out are their cream blushes. So this is one of their more popular shades and I have this in like a deluxe size. I actually really like this size because like for me as a blogger, content creator, influencer, what have you, I have a lot of products, so it's nice to have something this size because there's no way I would go through a whole pan. I, I just know I wouldn't. But having this in this size, like I might actually hit pan on this. But this is their most classic shade. It's in Blossoming and it's this nice pink tone. Their blushes and highlights are so silky, very pigmented, so easy to use. This isn't necessarily, I just want to make this statement, a multi-use. It doesn't work that well on the lips. It truly is a blush. So I know a lot of cream products in the space are like, oh, we're a multi-use. This one isn't. Just, it doesn't work that well. I've tried it. Believe me, I've tried it like multiple ways just to see, but it doesn't state it is. So it does state it's a blush. But so pigmented, so creamy, lasts a long time. Gorgeous in other shades as well. And it just blends out like a dream. So I think this is what put them on the map. I still think it's one of their best products, although they've released a ton of stuff in the last couple years. This one is just number one for me and it's just their like classic OG original best. Okay, and then this. I love this. So Tower 28 has lip glosses. I think I did a whole video review. I'll have it linked somewhere up here, but they have quite a bit of product that is um, clean at Sephora, all of that. I think it's pretty popular and I see it like on Jamie Page's YouTube channel and a lot of like bigger YouTubers and stuff because it is at Sephora and it's clean at Sephora. But a lot of people really like like their blush, their bronzers, their lip glosses, which I do like all of those, but this, this was also best of 2021. This is Fairfax and this is their Sunny Days Broad Spectrum SPF 30 Tinted Sunscreen. So I use this as more of a foundation type product. I know it has the SPF claim. It even is accepted by the National uh, Eczema Association, which I didn't know was a thing. So it is very gentle and good for sensitive skin. But I just never consider anything that is a base as an SPF because the reality of it is, is like I use like four to five pumps of SPF on my face and like neck region. And I know I'm not using that much of this like all over. I'm just not. So I always do still use an SPF underneath. I just view this as like an added bonus of SPF. So throwing out my thoughts on that. But this, I love the pigment. So it's very lightweight, but it just really like blurs out the skin. It's not too oily, but it's not too matte. It has that perfect, my blanket's falling now because I'm getting excited, but it has that perfect combination of oil and then also like suspended mineral pigment to give you like a very light coverage, kind of blend everything out. You'll still see like stuff underneath the skin, but it almost like, gives an optical illusion because it is a little bit glowy of like a more flawless but you complexion. 
So I loved it. I saw someone, I was watching a video and she like applied it to her face like this. And she said that's what she likes the most. I use my fingers and I just apply it like this. But it is a light coverage product. Don't expect full coverage from it. But one thing I like about lighter coverage is I can build up coverage with concealer. And that's typically what I do. I'm okay having like a medium or light coverage and then I'll go in with a like heavier concealer. So if you don't like that method, you might not love this, but I think this is the best product from them because it's different. Shade range is decent, you know, like it's nothing to like, you know, write a whole love sonnet to or anything, but it's okay, you know. Um, but I do think it's their best product. I just think it's really good. And then last but not least, so Cloven Hallow. They've gone through a whole rebrand. Let me adjust my, I kind of look like a, I was thinking like a king's robe or whatever. But Cloven Hallow has gone through a whole rebranding. And now they're a little bit more of like a prestige line. And then they have Clover, which I believe they've now partnered with CVS for. And it's more of like a drugstore type line. So they've raised the prices a little bit and they've reformulated stuff. And I'll tell you, I've really liked their original Sunset palette. This one's even better. I did a whole video, I'll have it linked up here comparing the two. And someone might be thinking like, but Reagan, like their lip velvets, that's what put them on the map or like their foundation, their powder one. They have a lot of different products they've come out with, but I really feel like something that has been consistently good through and through because their lip velvets I do like, but they are a little bit drying. Just, just saying, I'll still use them, still even like them and that's okay. But I think their best product, this palette is such a great basic neutrals palette. Now they've made it where it's refillable and it's just super pigment. I've just, pigment, <laughs> pigmented. <laughs> I just really liked it. And the original I thought was pigmented. And then this one came aside and was like, or along, not aside, along. It was like, bye to the other one. Like, it's actually better. And a lot of times when things get reformulated, a lot of us are like, eh, that's not as good. But this one actually, it's better. And I just think it's consistently, you know, historically been a good product and it still is. And I just think again, for a nice basic neutrals, palette it's great and it's great for someone who doesn't want a lot of shades it's just a really nice one and I really liked it I would highly recommend all right guys so now that I've fumbled my way through this video let me know your thoughts again I might do a part two because there are brands I did not talk about like I didn't talk about Westman Atelier um Double Down Plain Jane Beauty I'm trying to think of who else like there was quite a few I didn't mention Jane Iredale Red Apple Lipstick Co like there's a ton of makeup brands nowadays but I truly was just okay straight up what happened is my friend Katie came over and we filmed this makeup look because she's a makeup artist and she did my makeup, except for the lip, we used something else for that. Um, but my makeup was looking good and I was like, I wanna film another video, what should I film? Oh, let's do a 10 best of 10 brands and that's how we ended up here. So that's what we're doing. But just let me know. If you did enjoy this, I will do a part two because there's a lot I can talk about and I love to just sit and talk about makeup and I could do it for hours. That's why I've kind of made a little career out of this. Anyways, all. Thank you so much for stopping by the channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe before you leave and have a wonderful, wonderful day or evening wherever you are in the world.